Hello, I'm Mikey Campling, and if you can hear me over, <laughs> over that uh, bit of music, um, which I'll put a link to because it's just a royalty-free thing that I found, I'll, I'll put a link to underneath because you have to really, unless you're going to pay some dollars and buy it. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little uh, vlog this week, a little update and things that have been working for me, things that have been going okay, I will let you about uh, and everything else will just pretend didn't happen let's just you know sweep those under the carpet <laughs> in the best traditions of freedom and democracy we'll hide all the things that didn't work okay um well i've had a bit of a reorganization in my workspace which is great i, I recommend that to you actually thoroughly um, i know it means taking time off writing but actually uh, get a load of stuff and throw it out and move stuff around and it actually you think oh my room is nice I want to spend time in here now and it's a privilege to come in here and you know be able to sit and write so that's a good thing to do that worked well didn't mean I had to get back into the swing of it afterwards but on the other hand it was nicer to come do it so hopefully that'll be good um, one of the big things I've been doing is I wrote a blog post about this the other day because I heard the idea of digital fasting being mentioned on um, one of Joanna Penn's podcasts which are fantastic if you haven't come across those yet just go seek out thecreativepen.com with two ends on pen um, I'm sure you can find it through Google easily enough loads of good stuff really worth checking out um, there's audio versions there's feeds you can subscribe to and you know YouTube videos there's all sorts of stuff so worth checking uh, loads of resources as well um, also links to you know anything you can think of that you might need as a indie author is probably on there somewhere um, anyway I like this idea of digital fasting because it seemed a bit more positive to me than this thing of saying okay I mustn't do this I mustn't do that you know I mustn't waste so much you know we all do it so oh, I mustn't spend so much time on Facebook I mustn't spend so much time on Twitter but it doesn't you know we don't stick to it I thought the idea of just saying, OK, this period, I'm not going to have any of those things actually seemed to chime with me really well. So I thought, OK, well, I'll do it. So I I just nothing fancy, no no apps involved, no interactive socially media tied in, um, you know, app things. I got a bit of paper and I scribbled on it what I was doing when. And I put a little slot in there at the end of the day when I had finished writing anyway, but not too late. Just, you know, sort of early evening. Um, when all the writing's done, a little bit on there saying, you know, social media, blog. Um, and I also wrote down here, though I haven't stuck to this at all, the idea that I should check my stats at like once a week or something, yeah, which is, you know, that's probably plenty for me when there's not a whole, whole bunch of stats to look at anyway. Um, but, you know, again, I'm sure that's something we all do. I've looked at that a bit more often than I meant to. So I'm going to have to try and stick to that better. But otherwise, the, the things have worked well because... I think what gets you is the idea that all this stuff's happening on Facebook, all this stuff's happening on Twitter, and you're missing out somehow if you're not there interacting and watching and commenting and liking and sharing and doing all those other clickety-click things. Um, but it doesn't matter if you're missing out. If you say to yourself, well, at this time, or say a couple of times a day if you prefer, I am going to do those things. So it will get taken care of. It will get looked at. So that's what I'm doing. And it's actually good because you think... I can forget about it. I'm going to do it this evening. I can forget about it all day, you know. And if sometimes happening where you couldn't really be doing anything else, you know, you're waiting for a bus or something, uh, you're waiting for the kettle to boil, then sure, yeah, you can, you know, have a quick look on your phone um, because you're not going to get too stuck on that. And the idea that it's, you know, oh dear, I shouldn't really be doing this, but I'm just going to have a quick look, kind of makes you think, well, it better be a very quick one because I shouldn't be doing it at all. So, you know, that might work for you. I found that good this week. Um, another little simple thing that has helped me a bit. I don't know if you know this, but if you go to Google and you type in the search bar timer for a number of minutes or, you know, a number of hours, it will do a countdown timer for you. And you can always minimize that screen of your browser or, or you know, shrink it down so it's out of the way. So I've combined that with the session timer, um, no, sorry, not the timer, the session word count in uh, Scrivener, which I use for my first drafts. Um, so you know how many words you're typing and then you've got a timer. 
I mean, I have to make the time as small so it's not bothering me. And I, you know, I'm not looking at the corner of my eye thinking, oh no, you know, panic, look at the timer instead of typing. Um, so I make that small. I, I use two monitors anyway. So I shove that off to one side and I'm writing on the other monitor. And the first one I did, because that's not the end to this tip, folks, there is more to it. The first one I did, I did a, like a benchmarking thing for myself. So I set the timer for an hour, made sure my session counter was zero on Scrivener. And I tapped away at what was a reasonable pace for me. Um, it wasn't the fastest in the world. It wasn't the slowest, but it was kind of a reasonable pace for me. And I looked at that and I wrote that down. And then the next time I had a writing session, I set the Scrivener target uh, for that session to be that number that I'd arrived at. And then I set the timer for an hour and it was I knew that I could do it because I'd done it the day before. So I gave myself a really realistic target, not some sort of fancy thing. I thought, oh, well, you know, this person that I follow on Twitter or whatever does so many thousand words, so I, I must aim for that. It's good to have high aspirations for a good output, but um, you've also got to start with where you are, not where somebody else is. So I set that to my benchmark, and the next time I did it, I didn't only hit it, but I beat it. And I was really pleased with that. You know, it was only by 100 words or something, but it it was a significant victory. And you can think that's great. That means I really used that hour. I didn't waste it. I didn't stare into space or, you know, do strange research that I can put off till another day. I just managed it. So that worked for me. And I preferred that vastly to using something like Write or Die, which is you know, it's fine. It's interesting. Um, I've blogged about that before. It It's not a bad way of picking up your pace if you feel that you are kind of glacially slow. And I am sometimes um, that slow. But uh, remember, it is only a rough guide, this word count thing. And the quality of what you're doing is important. And also some days you need that kind of thinking time. You know, some days are about that. And you shouldn't worry about the word count on those days. If you've got some ideas scribbled down or you've realized some gaping plot hole and you've actually had a brainwave and fixed it, well, that's actually very valuable. You, know, you needed to do that. And the fact it's affected your word count is really neither here nor there. These things have to be done. Um, so those things have really worked for me. It had a bit of a tidy up and a rearrange of the workspace. It cleared things out. I've done some digital fasting. I've cut down the amount of time I'm on social media and it does mean I've been more effective with the other time so I've set myself you know a, a target of blogging the other day and so I did post a, a blog and I'm trying to do that a bit more I am going to try and give you on these videos once a week I am going to try and post up um, something five days a week on my blog we'll see how I get on with that um, if by the way, you're watching this and you are something to do with the indie author self-publishing type world and you are would like to contribute a guest post. I'm up for that. I'm open to suggestions. Uh, please contact me via the website or via at Mikey Campling on Twitter or go to MikeyCampling.com and either leave a comment or uh, there's all the means of contacting me should be on there. I'm on Facebook and everywhere, basically. Or you can just type Mikey Campling into Google and that will probably come up with me because uh, luckily I've got quite an unusual name, so I'm quite easy to find. So, ha ha, all those kids who made fun of my funny surname when I was a kid. Ha, now how can we find you on Google, you know, Mr. Joe Brown or whatever your name is? We can't, but you can me, so that's good. Um, there are other Mike Camplings. Oh, that's, that's not me, I'm the Mikey one. Okay. Um, that is all I can actually think of to say for today. So rather than rabbit on and waste your very valuable time, I will cut it off there. Um, please do feel free to chip in with comments, uh, especially if you've got great ideas on uh, what works for you to get your writing going. Please let me know. OK, I'll talk to you soon. Keep writing, keep smiling, keep up the good work, keep tapping the keys, keep moving the fingers, folks. Keep those fingers moving. And goodbye.